Hi guys! Good day! I am Liza A's sister and the team are Mary Me Takaban and Jan Paul Sol. So the team decided to have a video recorded report because we don't have uh, inter very good internet connection. So I hope you would understand us. And because a very short period of time that was given, we can tackle all the inside in the module so we decided to have the summary of the Harris assembly so let's go so the Harris assembly according to Andres Bonifacio during the their election I am taking the chair in this meeting to give you a fullest opportunity to voice your views and then to vote what shall be done but one restriction do I impose upon the freedom of your deliberations is that whatever the majority shall decide that all present will loyally accept and steadfastly abide by. So the picture that's shown in the screen are the first meeting, meeting, meeting of the Harris in 1897. So that's the topic that we are going to tackle. So, Andres Bonifacio and the Katipunan. So Andres Bonifacio was born on November 30, 18. 63 in a small hunt of Cali as Zagara, present known as Carlo M. Recto Avenue and Tondo, Manila. So Andres was the eldest of the five of his siblings. So he obtained his basic education through a certain Guillermo Osmeña of Cebu. The Bonifacio family was orphaned when Andres was barely 14. With this, Andres assumed the responsibility of raising his younger siblings. In order to support the needs of their family, he maximized his skill in making crafts and sold papers, pans, and cans. So he also worked as messenger in filming and company. So eventually, he moved to Vizel and Company where he worked as a warehouse man until 1897. So poverty never hindered, hindered Andres thirst for knowledge. So he devoted most of his time reading and books while trying to improve his skill in the Spanish and Tagalog language. The warehouse of Rosal and Company served as his library and study room. So Andres was married to Gregoria de Jesus who happened to be his second wife because his first wife, Monica, died after their marriage. So Gregoria was only 16 years old and Andres was 29 when their Roman spang. At first, Igoria's parents never I were against their relationship, but in time, allowed the couple to marry in Catholic rites. So the two were married in 18, 1892, both in Catholic and Katipunan. So Gregoria chose the Kambini as her nom de Gori. So the picture are Andres Bonifacio and Gregoria. So next is the Tejeros Conviction. So the Harris Conviction site are in that that will found in Rosario's Cavite that uh, doon naganap ang unang um, halalan or murag murag congress and doon din naganap ang kanilang mga pagpupulong para sa kanilang plano para sa ating bansa and doon naganap ang unang halalan na kung saan tatlo ang tumakbo si Emilio Aguinaldo um, Andres Bonifacio and Mariano Trias. So, si Emilio Aguinaldo ay isang magdalo and the two are both magdiwang. So, Emilio Aguinaldo won of being the first president of the Republic of the Philippines with the vote of 146 out of 256 support register, register voters and Andres got only 80 and Mariano Trias got 36. I don't know if I'm correct, but correct me if I'm wrong. And Emilio become the first president. And this vice president should be Andres Benefesio because he got 80. But then Mariano Trias become the vice president because at the time daw, bawal daw maging halal ang dapat na ay degree so that's the reason why Mariano Trias that become the vice president so let's move on at actually found it was some Rosario's Cavite so on let's go to that Tejeros conviction on what really happened so on May 22 
1897 and conviction was held in Tejeros in order to settle the dispute between the two council and to decide on what type of government should be installed. During the early phase of the conviction, the crowd became unruly, causing a recess. When the conviction resumed, Bonifacio was assigned to preside in the election of the officers of the new government that was to be set up. But this, before this, however, Bonifacio laid down the rule that the assembly should respect whatever could be the outcome of the election. So when Bonifacio was elected Secretary of Interior, Daniel Ter Tenora contested and argued that a lawyer should handle the position. So Bonifacio felt insulted and demanded an apology for Tenora. From Tenora. So because of humiliation and anger, Bonifacio declared that all matters conveyed in the Tejeros Convention will null and void. Together with his supporters, supporters, he left the state house. So actually, during that time, di, hindi sila pwede lumabas na dadaan sa kanilang kalsada. Dapat dun sila sa tanan kasi um, na mga kastilang nakaabang. So, Acta Tejeros na impact and the revolutionary government of Aguinaldo. So, those that I was saying are actually a document. So, the next day, Bonifacio stressed stress out his reason, reason for invalidating the Tejeros conviction through a document known as Acta de Tejeros, signed by his supporters. So, meanwhile, the elected officers of Magdalo held a meeting at Santa Cruz de Malabon. That night, Aguinaldo and the other elected officer in Tejeros took their oath of office. So, Bonifacio decided to establish another government independent from what from that of Aguinaldo in accordance with the na in fact enacted by him, which signed by his 41 supporters, including two of Aguinaldo's general, general. So, these two general known However, turned their back on Bonifacio after a talk with Aguinaldo, pleading loyalty to the latter instead. So the revolutionary government was established without the customary election on 17 April 1897. So with Aguinaldo completing his cabinet member through appointment. The Cry of Pugad Lawin the Philippine Revolution against over 300 years of Spanish rule began with Andres Bonifacio, leader of the Katipunan, a secret revolutionary society that sought independence for the Philippines from Spanish colonial rule. The cry of Pugad Lawin was an event that officially marked the start of the Philippine Revolution against Spain. The, revolu the, the revolt later grew in strength and spread at provinces including Manila, Bulacan, Cavite, Pampanga, Tarlac, Laguna, Batangas, and Nueva Ecija which were eventually represented by the eight rays of the sun in the present Filipino flag. On 23 of August 1896, the Supremo and his troops formally launched an armed revolution against Spain. They tore the resident certificates or cedulas which symbolized their defiance against from the colonizer. This became in history as the cry of Pugad Lawin. Definition of the word cry The word cry comes from the Spanish El Grito de Rebellion or El Grito for short. Thus, the Grito de Balintawak is similar to the uh, Grito de Dolores of Mexico it is on 8 and 10. But, the El Grito de Rebellion strictly refers to a decision or call to revolt. It doesn't necessarily mean shouting, unlike the Filipino term sigaw. Originally, the term cry referred to the first clash between the, the members of Katipunan and the civil guards, or Guardia Civil. The cry could also refer to the tearing up of cedulas or community tax certificates and resistance to Spanish government. Different dates and places. Several accounts provide differing dates and places for the cry of Pugad Lawin. 
Oligario Diaz, who was an officer of the Spanish Guardia Civil, stated that the uh, cry happened in Balintawak on August 25, 1896. Historian Teodoro Calau wrote in his 1925 book entitled The Filipino Revolution that the cry took place during the final week week of August 1896 at Kangkong Balintawak. Santiago Alvarez, a katipunero and son of Mariano Alvarez, who was the leader of Magdiwa faction in Cavite, stated in 1927 that the cry happened at Bahay Toro, now in Quezon City, on August 24, 1896. Some of the apparent confusion about the place where it happened is in part due to the double meaning of the word balintawak and kalookan at the turn of the century. However, from 1908 until 1963, this event was officially recognized as having happened on August 26 in Balintawak. Ultimately, the government declared in 1963 a change from August 23 in Pugad, Lawin, Quezon City. So, events prior to the cry of Pugad, Lawin. Several events occurred to strengthen the unity of the Filipino people and brought a thirst for independence. This include the Cavite mut Mutiny of 1872, Marta Martydrome of the Gomborsa, propaganda movements, and different peaceful campaigns for reforms. Dr. Rizal, do, do, Dr. Rizal, Rizal's exile in the Pitan and the foundation of the discovery of the Kikiki or Kataas-taasan Kagalang-galangang Katipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan or Supreme and Venerable Association of the Children of the Nation Magdiwang versus Magdalo Magdiwang faction The Magdiwang was a chapter of the Katipunan a Philippine revolutionary organization founded by Filipino rivals in Manila in 1892 with the aim to gain independence from Spain The Magdiwang Council was acknowledged as the supreme organ responsible for the successful campaigns against the enemy. Magdalo Faction The Magdalo Faction of the Katipunan Chapter in Cavite, a Philippine revolu revolutionary organization which the aim to gain independence from Spain during the Philippine Revolution. Magdalo Magdiwang Rivalry Magdalo It was headed by Baldomero Aguinaldo Emilius Cazan while Magdiwang led by Mariano Alvarez Bonifacio's uncle-in-law um, In Magdalo Emilio and his troops defeated the Spanish forces in several in encounters while in Magdiwang Bonifacio had won no battles. Um, in Magdalo, defended towns under its own jurisdiction. While in Magdiwang, defended town under its jurisdiction. Magdalo-Magdiwang rivalry. Aguinaldo issued manifestos informing the Filipinos that a provisional government has been established in towns that had been pacified and asked the Filipinos to recognize the new revolutionary government of the Philippines. Military defeats on the part of the Cavite revolutionaries lead the Magdiwang to invite Bonifacio to settle the rivalry between the two councils. Magda, uh, Magdalo wanted to replace Kiki Ki 
with new government and with new leadership. While Magdiwang wanted to retain because it already had constitution and by laws. The Heros Convention. So, on March 22, 1897, the assembled leaders of the Hero decided to replace the KKK with a new government. Emilio Aguinaldo was elected president in absentia, and Bonifacio as a as Secretary of Interior, but was questioned by Daniel Torreno for not being qualified for that position. It leads to Bonifacio's annulling all the. Uh, it leads to uh, Bonifacio's annulling all that had been approved and resolved. The Katipunan. On July 7, 1892, the Kataas-taasan Kagalang-galangang Katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan was founded in the house of Dilato Arlano at 734 Cali Elcano Cor as Garazaga. Membership was true blood compatibilizing the foundation of the secret society which aimed the separation of the Philippines from Spain and the expulsion of the Spaniards in the country. The first supremo of the Katipunan was Diodato Arellano, followed by Roman Basa and finally Andres Bonifacio. In 1890-1893, women were given the chance to join the organization. The first members were Gregoria de Jesus, Josefa Rizal, Marina Zizon, and Angelica Lopez. This serves as the keepers of important and confidential documents of the Katipunan and stage galas as France for the regular meetings of the male members. By 1894, the Katipunan spread throughout Manila. In order to strengthen and further widen the operations of the organization, the Kalayaan, the official organ of the Katipunan was published with Emilio Jacinto as editor. Two works of Bonifacio were published in the Kalayaan, Pag-ibig sa Tinubuang Lupa, and Ang Dapat Mabatid ng Mga Tagalog. The Plan for a Revolution An important meeting held on May 3, 1896 concluded with a plan to rescue Rizal from the Pitan to lead the revolution. The task was assigned to Dr. Pio Valenzuela. Unfortunately, Rizal expressed his opposition to the idea of launching an unprepared revolution against a strong nation protected by well-armed defense force. In the end, he urged that if the revolution is inevitable, the revolutionary members should seek the help of the rich and influential people to convince them to support the cause of the revolution. He also suggested that the service of Antonio Lona be secured by the organization because of his military expertise and affiliation with rich and influential Filipinos. Discovery of the Katipunan The quarrel between two employees of the printing shop publishing the RUD Manila resulted in the discovery of Katipunan. This happened after Apolonio de la Cruz was given a pittorist in salary and Teodoro Patenio was not given any. A heated argument sparked between them, which led Patenio to confide the secrets of the Katipunan to his sister, Honoria, at the convent where she was staying. Her tearful reaction attracted the attention of one of the nuns. The nun, in turn, persuaded Patenio to tell anything, everything he knew for Mariano Gel, the parish press of Tanto. After hearing the revelation, Gail contracted the authorities and urged them to read the printing shop. Documents of signed in blood receipts and ledgers related to Katipunan was, were confiscated from the shop. I.L. Fitted Destiny As a result of the fateful experience he encountered in Cavite, Bonifacio planned to return to Montalban and San Mateo. On their way to Montalban, he and his followers passed by Limbon. In Dang, a place in Cavite, where food was scarce and people were tie-fisted. At this point, Severino de las Alas turned his back against Bonifacio. The injured Bonifacio responded with treats and words that were wrongly interpreted by the people of Indang. The people sought the help of Aguinaldo, who immediately ordered the arrest of Bonifacio. On April 27, 1897, Skirmishes took place between the forces of Bonifacio and Aguinaldo. In the seed scaffold, Siriaco was killed while Procopio and the Supremo were caught. Andres Bonifacio was stabbed in the neck, weakening him and soaking 
him in blood. The next day, the prisoners were brought to Indang Tribunal, then to Nek. Within the day, Mariano Noriel created a tribunal that eventually tried and convicted the Bonifacio brothers of sedition and sentenced them to death. Surprised by the decision of the tribunal, Aguinaldo commuted the verdict. He recommended the Bonifacio brother be exiled to an isolated island also found in Cavite. However, General Noriel and General Pio del Pilar dissuaded him, arguing that by reducing the sentence, the revolutionary government of the Philippines would one again be at stake. Aguinaldo, in the end, changed his mind and signed the death of sentence of the Bonifacio brothers. On May 10, 1897, Procorpio and Andres were not sh were shot at Mount Nagpato near Mount Bantes in Maragondon, Cavite. This event ended the short life of the Supremo, his educational attainment and military expertise. Namina have been equal to that of other heroes, but his love for the country was absolute. His name will always be revered and serve as the battle cry of Filipinos who yearn for freedom, oppression, and injustice.